Hey everyone, and welcome back to Civics Review. Today we're going to be talking about the preamble to the Constitution, what the goals are, and what they actually mean. Well, let's get to it. Now, the preamble is actually part of the U.S. Constitution. Remember, this is the document that creates and establishes the three branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. The Constitution acts as a rule book for our government, sort of defining what they can and cannot do. Okay, whatever. That's not what we're learning here. What's the preamble? The preamble itself is the introduction of the Constitution. Allow myself to introduce myself. And within the introduction, the preamble establishes the goals and purpose of the Constitution. And lucky for you, it does this in 52 short words. And it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty, to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. What? That's it. It's over. That's the 52 words. Now, the most important part of this, and the part you're going to be tested on the most, is the very first line, we the people. So let's take a closer look. Now, there's a lot more going on at face value for the three words, we the people. And the concept that we link with these words is what we know as popular sovereignty. And that means authority of the government comes from the people. Now, if you were to ask somebody on the side of the road, like, hey, who's in charge here? Most people wouldn't think it's the people. Most people would point to the president or the White House and say they're in charge. But when you actually think about it, who's putting this person into office? Who's allowing them to run the country? Who's voting for this guy? And that's us. Popular sovereignty basically means we the people, and we the people means the authority of government comes from us. Again, this is something that's super important. You're gonna see it on your state test, and your teacher should be testing you as well on this. Popular sovereignty. Burn that into your brain. Wait, back up. I would never recommend doing this on a real test, but that is creative genius. And how many answer choices are actually possible on this test? And where are the numbers? How do you keep track of all this? Moving on. The next part of the preamble states, in order to form a more perfect union. This is not America saying, hey, we're great and we're perfect and we're gonna be more perfect because we're America. This part of the preamble is actually referencing a significant failure from our past. That's right, this preamble to the new and improved shiny constitution is actually Constitution 2.0. You see, we had a governing document before that didn't work out so well, and it's called the Articles of Confederation. It was our first attempt attempt at establishing goals and purposes of the government. The preamble to the new constitution is kind of stating that, hey, we're going to make things better the second time around. It lists several goals on how they're going to make it better, and we need to know them all for our test. So let's put these up on the drawing board and compare them side by side. On the left hand side, we have our brand new constitution that the preamble is a part of, and it's going to list the goals. On the right side, we're going to have the Articles of Confederation, our first attempt that was a failure, and all of the weaknesses that were created by that document. If you're interested in more information about the Articles of Confederation, you can check it out up here. But let's get to these goals that we need to go over. The first goal listed in the preamble is to establish justice. And that seems like a funny goal because, well, under the Articles of Confederation, did we not have justice? Did we not have any kind of justice system? And the short answer is no, we had justice. The long answer is there's no judicial branch. The Articles of Confederation only had one branch of government. And so the new goal here of establishing justice means, hey, look out, we're gonna have a Supreme Court in our government and they're gonna interpret the laws for the entire country. The next goal in the preamble is to ensure domestic tranquility. And domestic means in our own country, and tranquility means being peaceful. You knew that, right? Okay, so the goal is to make sure that we have peace at home, and the weakness of the article that the preamble is referring to is the fact that there was no executive branch. So we had no president under the Articles of Confederation, no one to kind of lay down the law and make sure people are following it. So the Articles of Confederation had no president and no Supreme Court. Huh, I wonder why it failed. 
Up next, we have provide for the common defense, and this is an easy one to understand, right? That should be a goal of every country, is to provide for everyone's defense, meaning a military to protect the people. Of course, under the Articles of Confederation, we couldn't afford to pay a military because we couldn't collect taxes. This is why we see depictions of the military during the Revolution as being poor, cold, and hungry all the time. It's because they were. Yikes. Almost there. Next one is promoting the general welfare, and welfare means your well-being. So I think that's a fantastic goal for a government to have to help people in need. Things like TAMF, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, SNAP, which we used to call food stamps, all of these things are for the general welfare. Oh snap. <laughs> And, of course, under the Articles, the government was unable to do this, mostly because they could not collect taxes. And without taxes, we really don't have social programs to help others. And the final goal is going to make a lot of sense. We're going to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Posterity meaning the future generations, right? That's the final goal within the preamble, is to make sure we keep everyone's freedom safe, not just for us, but for all future Americans, that they can enjoy these blessings of freedom that we have. Of course, this is also referencing the failure of the Articles of Confederation. They were unable to protect people's freedoms, unable to do much, as you can see. So here's the big picture. The preamble is the introduction to the Constitution, which is our rule book for the government. It establishes the goals and purpose of our government. And then the other thing that we really need to know is we the people, this idea of popular sovereignty. Authority comes from us, and we give that authority to the government. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.